Maybe you've seen already a bunch of videos about university degrees, techniques, and you're a bit lost in all of those informations. And every type of studies are so different. The type of engineering studies is a term which is so wide. So if you're interested about being you already, or if you're just curious about engineering studies, this video is made for you. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm currently an undergraduate student in life science engineering in Switzerland. And basically in Switzerland, you have a bachelor, which is going to last for three years. And then you have a master degree. So basically you cannot do anything with just a bachelor. So a master is compulsory. And the master is gonna last between one and a half and two years. So I'm currently just there. I just finished and validated my second year of bachelor. So all the tips, all the points I'm gonna explain in this video are the 10 things you should know before or if you already started about engineering studies. That's just made from my own experience and that's what I really wanted to share with you today. First thing I wanted to talk about is that all studies techniques cannot be applied for all type of studies. What I mean by that is that on the internet you can find so many videos, so many content about study techniques and I really enjoyed watching this video before studying university. Just to have some kind of clues, some kind of methods I wanted to apply for my own studies. But as medical studies has nothing to do with law studies, law studies has nothing to do with engineering studies. And all of the advices cannot be applied for anything. For example, if you just see content about some studies that are going to be learning by heart all the muscles of the human body, that's not going to be the same thing than understanding thermodynamics and applying the principles for exercises. So it is really important for you to find your way during your studies before and to know which kind of things you can apply and there are some advices and techniques for engineering subjects that we're gonna get through in this video already. Of course there are some advices which make sense for everything such as consistency, attend lectures and everything and there are some advices, my techniques that we're gonna get through a bit in this video and I'll probably do something more detailed if you're interested. Second point, it's okay not to know the whole theory by heart. For some subjects you will have to, but for most of the engineering subjects such as analysis, computer science and everything, you won't have to learn everything by heart and you will have to find another technique. So lectures can be sometimes overwhelming. It's just like, I do not understand how he proved this thing or where this theorem come from, but that's okay. Don't lose your time too much on just learning a theory by heart. There's so many more important things. You will have time to proceed everything you saw in this lecture. If I think this point is really important, it's because when I was in my second year, I was part of an association that basically was coaching the first years through just the beginning of university. And once there's a student who came with a screenshot of a comment that an assistant made on their physical class. And basically this uh, assistant was saying that they had to know everything by heart, rewrite, rewrite the lessons, that was nothing. They won't be able to do it if they were not doing so. There was honestly a really rude message. And all the students that saw that were just so unmotivated and being like, we don't have time to do that. And that's very true. For example, for analysis or linear algebra, you're gonna have some kind of exercises to do. So just taking time to learn by heart the whole theory and being able to rewrite them by heart, which was basically what this assistant was saying, is honestly meaningless. And really do not lose all your time on that. That's not the main important thing. And that directly leads us to the third point of this video. And if there's one point you should take back from it, is this point. Exercises are the key. Train as much as you can on subjects. That's so important. What I mean by that is that, for example, in some kind of subjects, mostly the exams are, are gonna be exercises. Of course, be careful about what each subject asks. For example, if you have to know by heart the theorem, being able to rewrite them and to prove them, learn that, that's really important. But if, for example, in your physical class, you know that you're just gonna have three big exercises to resolve, well, you have to know the mechanism. What can you use to solve it? And that's why exercises are so important. And sometimes you would just be like, okay, I know this formula, okay, I know this theorem. But if you're not able to apply them in exercises, that's not gonna lead you so far. And as everything is a bit linked, that lead us to the fourth point, which is that is normal to struggle. That is normal that it is hard and that you're not able to do all the exercises on the first shot. <laughs> During my first year, I found myself crying over a series of exercises because I didn't 
even know how to begin the first exercises. And that's okay. Being in this position is honestly so terrifying and that's where all the bad thoughts are gonna arrive to you. Like, I'm not gonna be able to make it. If that comes to the exam, I'm dead. And that's so much not true. One thing someone told me that really stayed with me for the whole year and that was so important is that every week you're gonna have different subjects you're gonna have new material new content and then you're gonna have exercises about them so struggling every week does not mean that you're not getting better that's absolutely not that because that's new content so of course everything is gonna get new everything is gonna be difficult because you're not used to see those kind of topics and one thing that you should keep in mind is that at the exam that's only gonna be topics that you studied during the year that's not gonna be brand new subjects like you have on um, this exercises series that is based on what you saw this week if there is one advice that i could give you about exercises is just redo the exercises when you're reviewing for an exam or do other exercises but that are on these subjects because that is going to be so important and you will see how better you got because you're gonna have the keys to how to solve those exercises more easily and you're gonna just see at this moment how better you got fifth point that i wanted to talk about is that don't look at the correction too quickly. I know how tempting it is when you're really struggling, you just don't know how to start to be like, okay, let's just have a quick look at the correction and then I know how to start. Don't, do not do that directly. But I mean, it's that's fine. I also used so much the correction, but what I mean by not too quickly, there are too many things that are important about it. Try your best at first. Try everything you can. If you have an idea of maybe how you could solve it, you just don't know really how to apply it, okay, write it down. Just write everything so you have kind of keys and maybe when you're gonna check the correction, you will see that, oh, okay, this was not that wrong. I could have done that. Maybe I didn't know how to use it or I forgot the first part, but there are keys that I already have. If you have to spend five more minutes on this exercise before looking at the correction, just spend those time. Sometimes it can be like really, really, really time consuming to spend at those exercises, just look at your paper, struggling, but that's worth it. Because sometimes for most exercises, the most difficult part is to start with those. So if you just look at the correction for the beginning, that's the beginning that was important. That's how to use the mechanicals and then solving values, it's maybe less important. Secondly, about the correction, do not just rewrite it or just read it. Please take time to look through it, to understand it, because, well, rewriting the correction is not gonna help you in any ways. Because when you're gonna redo the exercises during revisions, for example, you will have forgot everything you did. And that's not going to be that useful. Sometimes you're gonna spend more time on the correction than actually doing the exercises. You have to learn the mechanism to understand how the mechanism was done. What I did for a class is that I wrote on little cards, like the mechanisms, uh, for solving different kind of problems. And then I just reviewed them and reviewed them and reviewed them. And when I came to the exam, I had the exercises that were, okay, a bit different, but you know that you can use those mechanisms because they have so much links that you know what kind of mechanism you should use. You know what kind of formulas could be important for that. Take time to understand the correction. You have no idea how important that's going to be, but I can guarantee you that all this time that you will have spent on the correction is gonna be worth it. Six point, work with people or ask your questions. Personally, I'm part of the people who like to study alone or at least not with people who are studying the same thing as me. Especially when you're arriving to revision session, everything could be just so stressed if someone is in the same section as you, in the same year, doing the same thing, and you're reviewing a certain topic and he's doing something else. Because maybe you're just gonna be like, am I doing the right thing now? Shouldn't I be spending my time on that instead? That's okay to work alone, but maybe just have like a little study group or some friends or people that you're gonna meet each week, for example, just so you can ask each other the questions, that's the key. Because maybe there's a subject you did not understand but the other person did. Or maybe he's gonna ask you questions about a subject you did understand but him not. That's what is really important. And yeah, that has to be mutually. Like, do not be the friend who is only asking questions and not giving anything in return. Maybe some people won't have questions but that's so important to share, to share your sharing and to help each other and that just not going away. That's better for your friendship. 
depending on the university where you're at, they could be like exercises sessions where you can ask all your questions. There will be assistants there. And my advice for there is do the exercises before. Do the most that you can do before. Write down your questions that you're gonna have. And when you go there, you can directly ask. Those sessions will maybe last one hour, two hours and you will maybe need more time to do the exercises. So just by doing them before, you can take the most of this session just to ask really the questions you have and so you can just move forward. Seven points, not being a math or a physics genius does not mean that you're not gonna make it. As probably for math studies, there are gonna be people who are gonna be able to memorize everything. For engineering studies, you will probably meet uh, some people which are totally considered as math or physical genius. Like everything is really easy for them. They understand all the hard mechanism. Physical theory is really trivial and they can do everything fast. If you're not part of those people, that's okay. You can make it. I'm not part of any kind. Before studying university, I had no clue about physics. Like we had a tiny bit in high school, but so, so, so tiny because I was mostly in economics and law and I just decided to change. And that's okay. I just really, really studied hard for physics because I knew that was the part where that was the most difficult. And just remember that those people are not the majority of the people here. If everything does not come to your mind directly, that's fine, you can work on it. The key for that is to not let your gaps in math or physics just accumulate it through the weeks because eventually in those kind of subjects, it's just gonna get harder because you are supposed to know how to use the beginning to understand the rest. So really, if you see that there is something you don't understand, work on it. That is just so much easier just to work on subjects you already know or you're gonna do the exercises so quick but that's not the most efficient way you know if there are some subjects that are really hard for you take time work on them make everything that is hard for you your strength eighth point and probably one of the most important that i wished i knew before starting engineering studies is depending on the subjects even in your studies techniques are gonna be so different. If, for example, you have linear algebra class in one hand, where you're gonna have to solve exercises with matrices, and on the other hand, you're gonna have biology class where you're gonna have a thousand slides to know by heart, the techniques are not gonna be the same. Instead of just saying that before the exam, which was personally my case with subject that I was just only by heart, and I really found myself just before the exam realizing that I did not know enough. Take time before for that. Take time at the beginning of each semester of each year, if you know you're gonna have a new subject, to just analyze what you have to do. Do you have to be able to solve exercises? Do you have to know the theory by heart? And then you're gonna establish the techniques that are gonna work for you. Point nine, which is really gonna depend on the kind of engineering studies you're doing. Maybe the syllabus or the classes you're doing for the first years have nothing really to do with what you wanna do next. From my own experience, I'm a life science engineering student and for the first year for my first semester, my classes were basically only analysis, linear algebra, physics and also like a bit of chemistry and in second semester I just had like the following classes so analysis 2, physics 2 and everything and just one class of biology. In our sections there are a lot of people that gave up during first year because they realize how much physics and analysis they were compared to the other subjects which are interesting as the most, the reason why we're here. But especially for those kind of studies you need to have this background of math and physics which is so important. Probably don't realize it now and that could be so boring. I still have classes, I don't know why we still have to take them but that's gonna be worth it. Just see far in front of you your goal. Just see what you want to do. You may be gonna see that in third year, the classes are gonna be so interesting, or you know the master degree you wanna do. And finding your motivations to just continue and to continue what you're doing is gonna make the biggest difference. And for sure, they are fun that you're gonna be able to find in all what you're doing now. Maybe that's not gonna be the whole class, or maybe they are gonna be a little chapter that are gonna be super interesting. For example, in my case, I had physics for four semester, which was at first so boring for me because I didn't see the point of doing all those physics. And on my very last semester of physics, I had quantum physics, and there were some subjects that I found super interesting. Some were not, but just to find a bit of interest in what you're doing instead of just being that's nothing what I want to do why am I doing that is gonna be word changing for you and the very last one of this video is that even if engineering studies can seem so tricky you're gonna have so much fun in it 
to. Forget all the cliche and all the things that you're scared about. Every student has his own studies pathway. So maybe the points that I found really important in this video are not gonna be that meaningful for you during your studies, and that's fine. Every path is different, but you can just always find something nice during your studies, even if the classes are not the most interesting at first. University is so much more than classes. You'll find friends, you'll find activities that you want to do, you can share interested also in those subjects that really, really, really interest in you, maybe be part of an association, and just share with people that are with you. You're not gonna be alone in this experience. You're not gonna be alone studying what you're studying. As far as I'm concerned, during my first year of university, that was so hard because I was always wondering, what am I doing here? Am I really at my place here? Shouldn't I be studying something instead? And now that I just did like two thirds of my bachelor degree, I can already say that I enjoyed so much my engineering study so far. I met amazing friends. I learned so many things that I don't know if all of them are gonna be useful. You share also like the very good time as such as the very hard time and that's gonna make you just so much closer also. And I think that at the end of the day, that's really the thing that I'm gonna keep in mind. See your girl in front of you and enjoy everything that you find interesting, good or meaningful for you. Engineering is really wide and that's probably what's make it so interesting. You're gonna share your point of interest with other people which have different and just see where everything is mixed. For almost, I would say, every engineering studies pathway, there is not like one specific job that you can have at the end. That just opens a very huge door and you're gonna discover what's really interesting for you and what is meaningful to you. As I said before, university can be so much more than studying. You will find fun in so many different ways, different people, different activities. And I think that's probably the most important thing to keep in mind uh, from this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I don't hesitate to share this video with people that are interested maybe in engineering studies, maybe that can help them. Don't hesitate also to continue the discussion below if you have something you want to add, something that was meaningful to you, so we can also all share our experience. So I'll see you all in the next video and thanks for watching.